Live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda Extra. Today, I'm going to be discussing issues of technology and we are going to focus on enhancing research with digital tools. Most of the times you hear people say the world has gone digital, it's now all about technology, that's the way of doing things. Some even may tell you, you're still locked in analog way of doing things, meaning slightly your way of doing things hasn't moved with times now. How do we promote digital, how do we enhance uh, digital tools in research? And we want to look at the importance of digital research to organizations and individuals. Now joining me on set to discuss this is Ogwal Martin who is the CEO of Mood Technologies. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, yeah. Uh, just to begin with, Ogwal, uh, when we talk about technology, that is something that many people would know. But now we are looking at digital research, enhancing research with the digital tools. What is this? Yeah, um, first of all, uh, technologies, like you've, you've already put it right, there was analog some time ago, and we are shifting, though we have some few people still using analog means to, to do work. But technology has come to stay. Uh, a lot of things we do, and it has enhanced a lot of our work. Life has become easier. I can take you back uh, in time, around 490 BC. Uh, in, in Greece, there was a soldier who ran for 40 kilometers to deliver a message. He mentioned one word, fell down, collapsed, and died. That was from the, from the city of Marathon to, to Athens, because there was a battle. They won, the military won, and uh, he was supposed to deliver the message back to to the rulers. Now you can imagine if somebody had to run 40 kilometers <laughs> to deliver a message, but now you have to tap a button. Oh. And the message goes, sometimes if it takes uh, five seconds, you're even now impatient. So technologies have really enhanced our, how we do things, how we interact with the world. We can now do mobile banking, we do things like online schooling. Our children are studying using uh, tablets and, and phones. And uh, during the lockdown, that wasn't a problem. Uh, you can uh, do clinic, you can consult your doctors, and so on. So technologies have really improved. And this is something we enhance in the field of research to help us improve and motivate mm. and uh, make us build a lot of accuracy in how we handle research work. Mm. Yeah. Now, uh, rightly said, one thing that comes to my mind, why must an organization use digital tools to conduct their research? Uh, why must? Because this is what you're focusing on. They could have had other ways of doing things. Why must they go now down to this? Maybe if I start from what uh, the old way was, mm. in that uh, you, have, you develop questions, uh, you recruit your team, send them to the field, they collect data, they bring you back the papers, mm. uh, you recruit uh, what we would, the people we would call ent data entry clerks. So you recruit the young people who are talented in typing in the computer, and they type. But re remember, the, the, per the person who collected data could have made some mistakes in writing. I hope you can read mm. all handwritings. I have problems reading a four, for some people, they write it like a nine. So, mm. <laughs> so if somebody is typing that, they make mistakes. And uh, also, there is what we, what we call double data entry in research. That means the first person has entered data. You don't trust it. You call the second person, something like uh, what the shopkeepers do to put two padlocks on the, mm. <laughs> on the door. So, uh, yeah. So you put your first padlock for safety, put the second one. So this is the old way of how people are doing things uh, in the research way. There are a lot of error points, which if we go uh, mobile, <coughs> most of our smart devices, uh, like phones and tablets, have a lot of capabilities. And data can be captured while you are talking. Like if I'm talking to you right now, 
I can enter your responses right away. Mm -hmm. So we reduce that error point. Also, uh, I'm assuming you, you, you've gone like, uh, let's say like even 200 kilometers away from your office to do a research. All these papers you've collected, you have to transport it back. Hopefully it doesn't rain. You talked about rain <laughs> this mm. morning. Mm. So hopefully it doesn't rain and uh, maybe in a pickup the, 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 the papers are not covered and you lose all the work you've done. So there's a lot of unsafety in such kind of means that people were using formerly. Uh, not only rain, if fire, papers burn. If fire, if, if fire burns the place where you're storing your papers, then you've lost the research itself. There are a lot of uh, points where using the old means doesn't really help us to, to really move fast. There are a lot of unsafety points. Mm. And besides, uh, we now have uh, features to enable you to see your results as you, as you do the work. Before you had to uh, assemble this, get these papers, uh, have a team sit down to enter and so on, and you don't have an idea what is still in it. But while people are still in the field, you can now start seeing your results. A lot of benefits to digital technologies and oh. research. Oh. The, the, there are so many smartphones available, and they all have capabilities to help us in conducting research. Okay, then uh, who should go for digital research? For example, some people that have small findings, some companies, uh, should also individuals do this? Or is it for big uh, companies that would opt for digital research? Um, everyone is trying to do research. Students are doing research. Mm -hmm. Organizations are doing research. So maybe when you talk of small, I don't know how small mm -hmm. might that be. But if you can go ahead to do the old method of research, that means you have more than enough funds to, to do a digital research. The key points where people spend in research is mostly, number one, they are printing papers. Let's, let me give a simple example, like you want to interview 300 households, and you have a 20-page questionnaire. You're going to be printing around 6,000 pages of work. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can spend money on that, why not put an app in a phone? Mm -hmm and simply eradicate the paper, and uh, besides all the risk. And if you're printing 6,000 papers, assuming there is no mistake at all, somebody doesn't, uh, a paper doesn't get torn for your questionnaire. So you have to print some excess, so you should be going for something like around 7,000 or, or something like that. A lot of costs you're going to be meeting. Then you have the people you are sending to the field who have to collect data. They have to go through question by question, uh, no matter who they're talking to, Mm. But uh, in, a, in a mobile device, you can put skips. The question doesn't apply to you, we don't ask you. So that cuts down the time taken to interact with uh, the, the respondent. If you're talking to the household head or, or the, the spouse or, the, or somebody who is in the house. So you cut down. Instead of doing uh, maybe interviewing five households, you could end up interviewing seven. And uh, the more field days you take, because you have to pay the team, and it's normally paid on a daily basis. Mm. So the more days you take in the field, the more money you're going to spend. Actually, you're not saving. If you use technologies, you're saving. And uh, the issue of people going to be typing again, the data entry clerks, remember you have to have two. You have the first one, you don't trust that they've put done a good work. You, you bring the second one, they do that. So all this you're going to eliminate, you're going to cut down all those expenditures and uh, shift all this into the tab. And by the way, you have to also do data cleaning. That means you're going to be involving a different group of people to cross-check errors in the data, which is something which can be really minimized. So in, in, um, if somebody has a small funding, like you're saying, they should actually go for digital methods, first of all, as a first point, because uh, a lot of people have phones now. You can, you can um, have the, the data collectors come with their phones. You don't need to uh, buy them. But of course, if they, if they don't have the, if you have the tablets, hiring a tablet is not expensive. It's between around $2.5 to around $4, approximately 10,000 to 15,000 Uganda shillings per day. If they don't have the, the, the phones, you can hire tablets mm. and still save a lot of costs. Sexually, 
going the old way is a lot more expensive. If somebody can do that, I can guarantee you they can really afford digital ways. Well, some technology here, and we are looking at enhancing uh, digital research. And I have, in case you've just joined, Ogwal Martin, who happens to be the CEO of Mood Technologies. These do digital research for various individuals, organizations, and they make things appear very accurate, but also very smart indeed. Now, you talked about using the mobile phone, using are there specific apps uh, that a person is going to use a tablet or who is going to use a mobile phone while conducting research can apply or can download or has to have? Oh, you said download. So uh, most of the apps are uh, available for download. Like in Google, you go to Play Store and download the apps. Um, but it's not about only downloading. You need to design your tools into them. Mm. So there are apps like um, uh, ODK, CS Pro, uh, Cobo Collect, um, Survey City, there are many, but this, these apps, they need smartphones, like smart devices, as we had said, and they need some, some uh, level of skill in how to use them, but they are free. These mm. apps are free for download. The, the part you need is the skill to design them. But uh, beyond that, when you talked about this is somebody who is going to collect data using a smartphone, sometimes you want to reach out to communities and you don't have the smart devices. Mm. Uh, let's say you want to get information from farmers in a certain area. Um, you normally buy data using your phone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you don't need a smartphone. Actually, a phone like, uh, I carried mine here. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you call this? This is Katoch, right? Mm. Katochi, Katoch, Kabi. Oh, you brand them so many mm. names. So <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, no, uh, these phones can do a lot of feedback. You can buy your airtime, you can buy data. And those are uh, methods which we call USSD. Mm -hmm. These are things that can be applied in research uh, so that you can send people a code, they dial that code, mm -hmm. then they keep filling the feedback, choose one to do this, choose two. You just keep the research mm -hmm. so simple, questions so few. Like when you call some of these customer care, Press one for this. Press oh, this and actually this. that is another means. Mm. That is what you call interactive voice response. Mm. So you call a customer care, before you talk to somebody, a nice lady mm -hmm. welcomes you. I don't know, maybe mm. ladies are just naturally welcoming. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so men are rare on, on that, so we give credit to them for that. So um, you find a nice lady, a nice lady's voice will come you and tell you, if you want to uh, get this service, dial one. If you want to talk to a consultant, mm. dial nine or something, mm. then you dial. And those are also different methods you can use because these responses, you are, these numbers you are dialing are sending feedback to a server, mm. somewhere, a computer somewhere. So we can gather this and then use it as a research. So besides USSD, where you are you're dialing a code and you're getting responses, you can also uh, apply uh, the, the interactive voice response and uh, and still collect your data. You don't need now to, re you can actually reach now thousands of people instead of having a smaller sample size. And for people who are in the offices, you may not need a smartphone, send them a link. They can fill up an online questionnaire. Mm -hmm. You don't need somebody to, you don't need to hire transport and so on for people to go. A small email link would do. And these are digital, you save a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's so many ways that digital research actually can help. Well, I know you're now uh, getting to where we are. It is all about doing research using modern technologies, digital research, where we limit a number of things, uh, materials used, transportation, number of risks, and above all, accuracy uh, when it comes to research is paramount here. And that is what we are discussing with the world. But you know research is broad. We have those that may go to health research, yeah. the doctors, we have those civil society does a lot of research on social behavior, character, human rights, and all that. So we may not have specific research, but generally we are looking at all various forms of research. How would you apply or how do you apply digital uh, technologies in carrying out this research? Now let's also look at some of the challenges. This may fairly look new to us here in Uganda. Uh, where we still have that, what is taught at university. Mm. Yeah, you get your question, uh, you're going to move, then you, 
the whole thing of normal way of doing research. So what are some of the challenges with this digital that seems quicker, of course, uh, less uh, expensive, and with all these advantages, with all the good you've told us that you get? So what are some of those challenges? Yeah, so uh, most of the things that you, we use actually have both sides, only mm -hmm. that one side weighs, outweighs the other. So in, in uh, using digital tools, first of all, we talked about having the smartphones. So you must, uh, you must have a smartphone or have a tablet. And uh, uh, that means if you don't have, you have to hire. Um, but, but if you have, we have to check that they have space. Uh, there was a time we did a research in Kenya and we, we had like uh, 25 enumerators we called and uh, like five of them had run out of space on their phones. So we had to actually get uh, either clear up space. You know people nowadays are, are really having social media things and downloading all videos and so on. So if you have to rely on that, uh, for most organizations, we, we advise that if you have a budget, you can hire the tablet so that these are special, they are not filled up, mm. so that you overcome that challenge. So we have that, we need to, to get the tablets, we need to get the phones, they need to have space, and also they need charging. These, these devices need power, so, <laughs> so if you go to a place when, uh, where, where there is uh, no electricity, it's a challenge. Though with all the years we have done for research, we have... Uh, always uh, figured out the nearest town where uh, near nearest mm. center uh, where we can uh, have the devices charged and we have power banks we carry mm -hmm. if somebody if it, even in in town people forget to charge their things uh, the devices so we, we normally provide um, spare power banks so that we don't pause the research remember we invest in research every day is a cost so any extra day in the field is a heavy cost on the person who has uh, started the research. So there is need for this. Uh, charging it, you need to have the devices, you need to have the space enough because sometimes you're taking pictures, um, uh, you're recording data and so on. Sometimes you're doing voice recording uh, for cases where we activate voice recording. Yeah, and then of course, then there's a human factor that comes in. Naturally, like in Africa, we love talking to our visitors. If somebody is just on, the f on a screen like this for the next even 10 minutes, I think you'll get a bit like, is this person serious? Mm. <laughs> yes, he's talking so, to me so while he's on phone. <laughs> so you're on phone throughout. Mm. So uh, we, we have to train the people who are going to be collecting data, how to interact mm. with uh, this, these are people you go in the, you don't live with them, so they mm. take you as visitors. We are naturally welcoming, mm. and we want to chat with you. And people are normally very free to give us information, but there is a way we have to train on how to interact. So we need to give people who are collecting data a good skill of human interaction mm. with these technologies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so much indeed. Uh, uh, that needs to be really factored in. I just figure out someone on phone while asking questions, <laughs> what that could mean. Definitely, that's why you talked about um, a lot of training. But we are looking at enhancing digital research. That is doing research using modern technologies, doing research that is more accurate and, of course, more time saving, but also uh, financially saving. How? Because technologies do that if well used. Now, when we talk about uh, digital research, we know sometimes you have to go to remote areas when conducting research. And our internet connection uh, or connectivity around the country in some areas is not that very good. If we still have challenges with network, just t network, someone calls and says our network is bad, that's why you can't get me properly. So what happens? Is it possible to monitor a team in the field in a remote area using this method of research? Yeah, first of all, the, you don't need internet to collect data. What do you need? The app itself works offline. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only time you need internet is to upload it, mm -hmm. which is sometimes what we do once in a day. Because as I said before, the team stays somewhere and uh, normally go to a location where that is collection, co collection takes place. So um, that is uploaded possibly in the evening once, and uh, these results go into the server. The beauty of it is that 
you can, the results come and you see them on your screen from wherever you are. Mm. You can decide to take your trip to South America and enjoy your uh, nice meal of pollo a la barta. Uh, I hope you know. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this, these are kind of like uh, you would enjoy your roasted chicken or go to our village and enjoy it. We have a nice fish called Surbana. Mm -hmm. You would go and enjoy it. <laughs> but the good thing is that research gives you, uh, digital research gives you that ability to have results coming in. Mm -hmm. If you're in a location, because y you mentioned that some locations do not have reliable connection, but some locations have. Mm -hmm. If you go to a location where there is a connection, that there's good net phone network, mm. you have internet connection. Actually, you could have data coming in like twice in a day. You monitor this, you relax, and have a dashboard like we normally go. If you go to our website, uh, mt.co.ug, you would see results there. Mm. We give dashboards where you can see, and this, some of them are already analyzed. You'll have a lot of peace of mind. Mm. There's a lot of uh, uh, modern technologies to help you monitor your research remotely. Mm. Now, uh, more technologies has been around for some time. Yeah. Uh, what has been your experience with Ugandans perceiving or responding to this way of conducting research? Actually, first of all, the organizations, most of them are local and international, so, mm. so they already know about uh, uh, technologies. The only thing is, can we use it in our places, in our country? So, and uh, a number of uh, uh, maybe people who are getting into the research field, like, like students and so on, they're already aware of this. And we have to also give more messages to those who don't know yet. These are available technologies. They are cheaper, and they help a lot into, in conducting research. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talking about them being cheaper now, does someone need special skills? You talked about students. Uh, carrying out research. I remember at university, yes, you're taught how to do research, and of course, it's one of the areas people don't like so much. If it's just a dissertation, it can make you really <laughs> feel nagged and all that. So do you need special skills if you're to carry out research in this way? Or is it something that you can just go to an app, that everything is easy, clear, then you're done? Why don't you like research? It's just lovely to do research. <laughs> Okay, it's, it could be hectic if you, mm. if you approach it the hard way or the old way. Mm. But um, if you've already collected data, you talked about the analysis, uh, do you need a special skill? Um, to some extent, depending on the kind of data you're going to be analyzing, but key statistics like um, averages, um, uh, uh, kind of frequency analysis and so on, need basic skill of understanding uh, data analysis. But if you go into deeper statistics about modeling and so on, uh, you need more understanding. You are going to do um, deep econometric analysis, you're going to do, uh, you want to predict the future using the data you've collected, you're looking at time series data, you want to look data over a range of years and so on. So this needs some bit of uh, skill. Some people are looking at dietary diversity. You are looking at uh, are people malnourished in a community? How do you measure malnourished? Uh, how somebody's malnourished and so on. So these ones now need a bit of deeper skill. Mm. Uh, basic skill for some of the analysis, uh, much deeper skill in some of the analysis. So yeah, that is where it varies. But uh, to interpret data, you need to understand the data itself. Uh, what kind of softwares or tools uh uh, are used here because when I look at, I'm trying to figure out, I'm in the field, I want to do research regarding something, and I'm now thinking of taking myself to exactly seeing how to go about these things. Uh, I'm watching the show this morning, there's something very interesting, maybe even I have a research I'm conducting, and I want to go digital. What are those that I require? Uh, in terms of software? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of software, we, we normally, I would advise you in uh, depending on, because research involving human interaction, there are mostly in two ways. Mm -hmm. There is a quantitative bit and qualitative bit. In the quantitative, quantitative bit is about uh, asking categorical information like um, male and female, mm. uh, you're black or, or white, uh, you, you're tall or short, or how old are you. So those ones need particular kind of software. Uh, things like Excel would 
it's free, it's available in, for most people. You can use it to analyze that. But there are specialized software for analysis of data. Uh, Excel is a little more general, uh, though some of the companies have developed software to add it on, add on it, and it's called an add-on, like mm -hmm. Excel Start. Uh, it's at a cost. And uh, other software like uh, SPSS, Starter, Argent Start, there are many others, but these are the most common software someone can use to analyze this data. Um, we, there is also a second method of collecting data, which is uh, qualitative. It's uh, like you go and collect a group of women and have a discussion with them, or a group of youth and have a discussion with them. You could record uh, your discussion, or you can write notes. That is different from someone categorizing things in terms of height and so on. So this time you have written notes. How do you analyze it? So there are software that are um, basically meant for that. Mm. And they're a little more costly, of course, compared to the first uh, uh, kind of research. Mm. So this software, first of all, listen to the audio like we are talking, mm. then tries to pick words and transcribe it. So it types instead, it listens and types. Mm -hmm. And starts sorting out the keywords. Wow. Yeah, there are specialized software for that. Mm -hmm. So they start sorting out the keywords and content. So they do content analysis, is what you call mm -hmm. content analysis. Though, because they're filtering keywords, you have to be also uh, keen on which kind of software to use. Mm -hmm. Because some of them are specialized possibly in legal terms. Mm -hmm. Some are specialized in medical terms. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I one time I worked into a building. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found a security guard and I he was looking a bit worried. So I asked him, uh, oh, my friend, uh, hello, how are you? I'm fine. Yes. Then I said, oh, what is the problem? Um, I'm waiting for my reliever. Mm. I had not had somebody tell me that they're waiting for a reliever. Mm. So I was like, what is a reliever? He said, oh, the person who is coming to take over from me. Mm. <laughs> mm. So I so if, if in their field, somebody taking over, a work from them is a reliever that is in the. Mm. I, I don't know, I'm not in that. So yes. I don't know if that is a key word they use or mm. it was just this person who calls the replacement a reliever. Mm. But different departments, different uh, professions have their terms. So some of these software sort out words and analyze it. So you have to be careful uh, mm. if you're doing a legal research, law kind of related, they're going to sort out law terms mm. and analyze it well. Some of the medical and analyze it well. But looking at the cost side of it, okay, of course, uh, the, the qualitative uh, software you ask for which one they can use. There are things like NVivo, uh, there is one Atlas TI, um, there is Max QDA. There, there are so many out there, but uh, these are the most common ones. Mm -hmm. About the cost bit, um, the ones that does categorical data, uh, age, sex, uh, and so on, they're a bit cheaper, uh, possibly. Uh, uh, they range between like uh, $100 to up to a tune you know, of $25,000. So you're talking about like 370,000 Uganda shillings at the current exchange rate mm -hmm. to over 90 million for one user license. They, some of them are way expensive. Mm -hmm. And for uh, the ones that does qualitative analysis, um, that is where you're having groups like we said, you collected a group of women and you talked to, uh, most of them start from like $1,000 and, and beyond, so you're look, talking about 3.7 million Uganda shillings and so on. So some of these software could be cheaper and expensive. Affordability now depends on who is uh, in need of using this software. But also, most of the companies that do software package them for particular kind of people. Yeah. There are versions for students. There are versions for non-profit, like for NGO, which are medium priced. For students are the cheaper version because students do research for three months, six months, and they're they, done. They are done. Like for you, you are worried about your research, but <laughs> you need a software that could work for you for three months and, uh, mm -hmm. and you're done. So you get the, the lower cost version. Then the business community, the commercial part, mm -hmm. that goes a bit expensive. And they have different features. So to choose a software, uh, you need to first know who is in need of this software mm -hmm. and what are they going to use it for. Mm -hmm. Then you can, can advise on which particular one now. But basically, those are the areas. Well, uh, usually in research, there is data cleaning. Yeah. And that is also another process that is quite hectic and disturbing as well. So if I 
use digital methods to carry out research? Do I need data cleaning also? Now, if um, the reason people clean data is mm -hmm. because of uh, possibly something is an error. Yes. Or it's actually doesn't, the logic doesn't flow. Mm. Let's say you're, you've gone to households and you're interviewing children. Mm. You're asking information about children. And somebody, instead of typing 10 year old, types 100 years old. Mm. Can you see that is a very serious mistake? <laughs> so when you analyze that, you're really going to get a really skewed result. Or somebody, or you go into a house and asking uh, uh, somebody, have you ever been pregnant? And this question applies to women, not, not a man. And you're asking a man, and they give you a response of no. Basically, it doesn't uh, mean to some, for someone to say no when pregnancy is not actually in their area. So that is kind of uh, mis-errors which occurs, and people need to clean it up. Though these errors can be avoided using digital means, if you already, we already say children are aged 0 to 10, that means if you enter 100 or even 11, the tablet will reject you from going ahead and say, no, wait a minute, we said children should be, the oldest child should be 10 years old. So why are you giving me 11? Why are you giving me 100? So that error is, is corrected. Uh, for the case of asking someone a wrong question, that can be skipped or turned into something not applicable automatically by a tablet. But also we have a third kind of uh, area that we normally do data cleaning in. If you go to a community and most families have maybe like five to seven members in the home, and you find this one household having like 30 members in the home. It's true, but it just not at the community level. Mm. So that one we have to agree on, uh, should we maintain it? Should we give them the average number, mm. which could be six? We say, you have 30, but we are turning you into six. Mm -hmm. Or oh, we just totally remove this household from mm. our data, because it's really going to, all we are going to ask them will be for, for 30 members of the household. So can we just remove this household? If we are targeting 300 households, can we do analysis on 299 and get accurate results mm. than doing on 300 and getting inaccurate results? So that is something that the researchers have to sit and agree on how to handle. So those ones are data cleaning. So in the tablet, when you used to use, use tablets or digital means, errors uh, about uh, entry errors can be controlled at the point of interview. <laughs> Well, uh, I know researchers are following, students are following, and wherever you are, it's very important. At one time, you would uh, love to carry out research over something, and we must accept day by day, our country is developing in various aspects. Previously, you would talk and discuss, but now someone tells you, but let's first conduct a research. You want to start uh, mining, you want to start, everything people today talk about research. Have you done research? Can we hire a firm? Can we, you know, is there any research you're basing on to present your arguments? So it, the world has gone into research and having facts. No wonder one said, who has not researched has no right <laughs> to speak. So when we talk about how to do research uh, using digital means, then that brings the relevancy of why we should embrace this, which is faster, more accurate, and also above all uh, it takes less money than you would if you did things the normal, the known way, the analog way of doing <laughs> things. Now, how, where does more technology come in? Uh, we've talked about digital research, but where do you come in? Uh, do you help people into the, this way of doing research? What's the connectivity? Apart from saying you did in technologies. Um, let me tell you something. Uh, there was one time a carpenter Mm -hmm. was very experienced mm. in doing his work. So um, he grew old and he became weak. So he went to his uh, manager and said, uh, but he was working on construction. He would mm. do very good buildings, uh, roofings and so on. Very perfect that people loved him so much. But he said, I think I'm growing old, I'm becoming weak. Uh, maybe I, I should retire and go home. I can't do this work anymore. So um, he went to his manager and said, uh, I want to go home, I want to retire. And he said, why? It's like, I think I can't do this anymore. So 
when you said, ah, but you are one of our best employees. Mm. Why don't you hold on, stay with us? He said, no, I need to go. So he said, okay, uh, just do me one favor. Do for me one more project. And I'll set you free. So he said, okay, maybe I've worked for you for a while. I could help you on that. Mm. So they gave him a site. He worked on it very half-heartedly. Mm. Did a shady work. He was a very experienced person. Did a shady work. Because he was rushing, he really wants to mm. get this work done. And he went back and said, uh, manager, I'm done. The building is ready. He said, okay, let's go and see. So the manager went. They normally has his checklist. Mm. But this time, instead of a checklist, he had something else in his, in his hand. He had some paper, which was different. So he said, okay, so where is the key? He handed over the key. The manager wrapped the paper back, the key back in the paper, and said, this is your house. There was no way we could say thank you to you. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he could have collapsed because this was a, the worst job he did in his life. So, um, coming back to where are we, what are we doing? Every research is like part of, we feel like it's part of us. So, what we do, we start from the preparation itself, digitizing mm. the questionnaire itself. Sometimes people structure questionnaires because uh, you have an idea you want to collect data on and uh, as you think through them you keep putting them down. So the first thing we, we, we sit with you and then say so what do you want to achieve? Are these questions applicable or not? Um, and uh, are these questions sensitive or less sensitive? Imagine uh, going um, to an area where there is sensitive land issue and the first question you're asking somebody is about land. Mm. Can you imagine that the whole research is spoiled? Yeah, because it's how they perceive you. You have not even yes. uh, got a rapport. You have not mm. even established a trust, the trust for this person you're talking to, but you're already firing a very sensitive question. So we first look at that, sort out the question and say, the location we're going to, what is, this, what is sensitive about, What is sensitive in that area? We're going to get this data all right, but let's move it to the middle of the questions. Or well, let's move it towards the end. When people have, this person has built trust, mm. they've maybe spoken for uh, uh, 15 minutes or 20 mm. minutes already. And then, so these are things we really reorganize from the research. Repeated question is someone is asking you about chicken, mm. they're mm. asking you about sweet potato. Uh, next question, chicken, sweet potato. And you say, so now what are you talking about? Mm. So some questions uh, could be right, but mm. needs to be uh, rearranged. So in the digitizing process, while we're digitizing, we factor that into consideration. And then we factor in that there is fatigue for respondents if the questionnaire is too long. So we need to have a control of how the questions flow. Mm -hmm. So um, most of the time we have to find where we can skip questions which are not applicable in a very orderly way. And these are some of the things that we do a lot in the digitizing process. And of course now the next bit is Results. We talked about analysis. We talked about uh, somebody having a skill. We have actually built a feature in, on, uh, on our dashboard. You can go to our website and see mt.co.ug, where you already have analyzed results. You don't need a skill to, now even basic skill. You only need a skill how to download, okay. <laughs> how to export it to Word. It's just clicking a button. So uh, that is something we have really, because we want to give back to our communities. It's, if we have a technology to do something, and we can do it and help our people, why not? We have to do that. It's what they do benefit us, benefit them. Um, we all benefit. So for, for, for online dashboard, we actually give it for free for all the research we do. Mm -hmm. Then when we go into deep analysis, we can now then have that discussion. So we provide that service for analysis, then uh, that analysis, and then preparing reports. And sometimes, uh, if it's scientific or other papers, there are publications that go into mm -hmm. journals. So uh, there is a need to prepare the manuscripts for publication because there are communities like you can go into agriculture and publish it in a journal for agriculture, or you can go to medicine and publish it 
to mm. where all the medical people can go and see this report whenever they want to search for inf some information and make references. Students are doing research all the time and looking for references. They need to check for publications. So if you have done a good work, mm. why not publish it? Well, uh, we've talked so much regarding research, definitely. And uh, not only research, but digital research. How best can we enhance digital research in our research we do? Of course, it has benefits. Uh, you take lesser time, it's cheaper, and also fairly more accurate compared to the ordinary way of doing research. But time is not so much on my side, I must let you go. But I know someone is watching, maybe they need to know more about how best, in case they are carrying out, if they want to have some checks and balance and consultation, how do they reach out to you? Yeah, um, our website is uh, www.mt.co.ug. Uh, when you get our website, you'll get all our contact details. We have got uh, directions to our mm. uh, to our office for those who want to visit us physical physically at in Tinder. So we have a Google Map. Nowadays, people use PIN. Mm. So <laughs> so you can go to the website, get the map, and put a PIN, and the, the map will direct you. You'll just drive it. It will give you all the routes mm. up to our office. So anytime you feel free to visit us, we are open for consultation and. Uh, Helping. Research is part of us. We, we just want everybody to enjoy research. Mm -hmm. Not like the way you're saying that it's some sort of hassle. Research is fun. <laughs> just enjoy it. <laughs> Martin, I have to let you go. And of course, thank you so much, our viewers, for being with us.